Welcome back, everyone, to the eCore Academy eLearning platform today. My name is AJ Raj, back with yet another anatomy and physiology video for you all. And for today's topic, we're going to be covering the key terms in anatomy and physiology. <clears throat> but before we get into that, please make sure you do uh, four things. Please make sure to smash that subscribe button down below, hit that like button on this video, turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of our channel's latest uploads, and feel free to utilize that comment section down below. Uh, of course, we'd love to hear all of your feedback. Uh, some of your comments may, you know, uh, constructive feedback comments overall what you want in future videos to come that comment section is probably one of the quickest ways to do so but if not i will show you our email address at the end of this video and we will also include it in the description box below if you want to have something that's uh privately sent towards us and you want to consist you know uh, <clears throat> you want a definitive uh contact line between us please utilize that email so as i was saying we're going to be continuing with our anatomy and physiology course, uh, but today we're going to take a little step back from these little systems, from the continuous systems that I've been doing on anatomy and physiology, and that Anita has been doing with her cardiovascular system. We're going to be stepping it, you know, taking a little step back and trying to accumulate everything together, and we're going to try and go through some of the key terms in anatomy and physiology. Now, these are very important terms. They refer to the you know, overarching concepts uh, and, and anatomical and physiological structures in the body itself. So that rather than looking at a specific system, such as the muscular system, and looking at specific muscle tissues, I'll be showing you the different types of uh, cells, uh, how they're classified together without being pertaining, without pertaining to specific systems. So we're going to look at some key terms, directions, uh, certain uh, terms that we utilize specifically in anatomy and physiology, what their meanings are. Uh, and we're going to also uh, look at some of the bodily systems that you will come across and look at their com comprehensible meanings in terms of these systems. So this is a more of an overarching video, and this is probably one of the most important videos you're going to need to utilize at the beginning of anatomy and physiology. So if you're just watching this video, uh, first time that you're watching it, and maybe you're taking an anatomy and physiology course in your high school, uh, I know anatomy and physiology is actually a very difficult course, so please make sure to tune into this if you're just starting or if you just want a simple review. Uh, I'm sure many of you will go through these, uh, but I have some constructive ways to actually memorize them. I know I really don't like using the word memorize, but at the end of the day, you have to learn these terms. So I want to say learn. Having a constructive way of memorizing is how I'd like to put it. So without further ado, let's go right into it. Now we're on to types of cells, part one. So we're going to take a look at some of the specialized functions of cells. Now we're moving away from location of you know, structures. We're going to take a look at some key terms of different types of cells. So this is also very important. So there are 200 different types, of cell, more than 200, uh, but approximately 200 different types of cells within the body itself that have their unique and specialized properties when it comes to assisting the body. Um, and of course, these are specialized cells, but they're much more specific. These are generic classifications. So cells allow for materials to pass through them as they help in assisting whole organs in processing the fluids and matter in our body, but they also help with responses to the body as well. So some of these responses can include your neurological responses. So neurological response within the brain that has to do with your brain neurons firing up. And then some are has, has to do with hormones, uh, hormonal response basically developing those chemicals, uh, making sure that you're leveling out the tonicity, how much salt is within the body's fluids, what exactly the body's fluids, the blood, uh, lymph actually needs uh, in order to make sure the rest of the body, the organs, tissues are all um, ample, amply supplied. Now let's take a look into some of the specific classifications. So there's actually four major classifications in anatomy and physiology. There are other, some more specific classifications, some that are missing for the immune system, but we will be saving them for uh, separate videos. These are the only ones that you need to know now in general terms that we have not covered and that we will not be covering in uh, specifically in these uh, upcoming system videos. So you have your nerve cells and receptors. So these are your cells, like your neurons in your brains, uh, in your brain and like the sensory receptors in your skin. And they're responsible for the five senses, like taste, touch, smell, sight, and hearing, as well as memory. So that comes in handy with the brain. So uh, this includes your brain neurons, as well as your, uh, your sensory receptors in the skin. In skin. 
Then you have your muscle, muscle cells, which are basically important for the movement and motion in the body. So uh, comprised of, uh, they make up your large muscle tissue, muscle fibers, myofibrils. These are muscle cells responsible uh, for making up uh, those basic components of muscles that I did make a video on. So please make sure to go check that out as well. Basic components of muscle. All right, and then we have epithelial, epithelial cells, which are the outermost cells that protect the body. Uh, these are skin cells, like your keratinocytes, melanocytes, and some of your other regular skin cells, like your basal cells. And then, of course, we have our glandular cells to secrete chemicals and make up glands. So these are all of your cells, like your apocrine glands, that make up your apocrine glands and your thyroid that helps to create uh, and absorb the certain fluids that need to be, and certain chemicals that need to be released into the body. So apocrine that basically helps you with sweat and thyroid that helps with controlling other uh, given bodily functions and helps produce thyroid hormone. So gen generic hormone for the body. It has to help with metabolism. All right, let's move on. Now let's take a look at some cell layer classification, some other key terms with cell layers. Uh, and how to distinguish them, distinguish cells between their layers. So uh, one classification means simple. So that means just a one single layered cell. Um, some single layered cells include your red, red and white blood cells. Very generic cells and they have one, a very specific uh, function. Then of course we have stratified, which is more than one layer and when you think about stratified, you're thinking about cells that are more complex. So they include your cardiac cells in the heart. So these are more complex cells. They have to do with electric stimulus. So essentially stratified more than one layer means it needs more, uh, more protection and it's more complex in its process. Then we have the pseudo stratified, meaning it has very thick and complex uh, structures, but it is actually a single layered cell. And an example of this would actually be basal cells. And basal cells are like your cells that are located on your skin, outermost layer of your skin, the basic component of those cells. And you have keratinocytes, melanocytes, which are more complex. Then we have columnar, which are tall and thin. So these are the types of cells that are located in your lungs. Uh, very tall and thin. So when you have these tall and thin uh, cells, essentially, you're allowing for air to pass through at a uh, more of a concentrated manner. So it's going to be much more concentrated and there's less uh, room for flaw. However, that's why the lungs are so massive because it needs to include more of these columnar uh, cells in a width, in, in more of a widened band. Then we have cuboidal, which are cube-like cells. Uh, they're actually located in the kidneys. And with these given cells, they're actually very complex, but they do help with uh, taking certain nutri nutrients uh, within the kidneys, whatever's going out, it's gonna immediately go into the intestines and it's gonna be released to the body. And there's nothing you can do there. So in, in the kidneys, that's where you get a lot of that absorption uh, in the excretory system. And then finally, you have your squamous cells, which are your flat cells. And these are some of your cells located across your skin. Um, also, likewise, so you have your keratinocytes and melanocytes that are very flat cells. And interesting, interestingly enough, your red, your red blood cells are also uh, going to be squamous cells. So red blood cells as well. And the reason being is so that they can cover a much larger surface area and they can be much more easily replaced when they're flatter and not as, in, as, as depth. So for, specifically for like red blood cells, something that's much easier to understand, uh, red blood cells have a maximized area. So they're much flatter so that they can actually uh, encompass uh, carry more oxygen on them so that they can transport it to the rest of the body. They actually don't even have a nucleus. So these are very simple cells, but they're actually very common and very essential. All right, everyone. So that'll be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been the Equal Academy eLearning Platform. Please make sure to like and subscribe down below. Turn on post notifications. Hit that like button. Of course, uh, we really lo do love all that support and encouraging all of our teachers here. And uh, also, we will also um, pay attention to all the comments that you have in the comment section down below. Feel free to check out our website at www.ecoreacademy.org. There you get full unlocked access to what we as an online e-learning platform actually offer to you. Uh, we have note sheets, quizzes, and worksheets that go along with each and every single video 
uh, organize into their separate core studies. Also, feel free to email us at ecoreacademy at gmail.com if you have any questions or if you just uh, want to reach out to us. Um, and just as a side note, we have a lot of new teachers teaching at the platform. So please make sure to check out their brand new courses and how they're starting off and make sure to hit that post notification bell so you don't so you stay updated on every single new video that they post. Um, also check out all of our uh, social media's um, accounts down in the description box below at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and also TikTok. Uh, we'll be posting that up, posting really funny videos, skits aside from just academics, uh, just to give you guys a good laugh. Um, but check out those mediums and use those mediums to share all of our videos. Once again, everyone, this has been AJ Raj. I had a blast making this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.